Hi, thanks for tuning in. I'm Prof K, and if you like this video, please um, subscribe and take a look at my other videos. So a lot of times I'm talking about electrical code to people who are becoming electricians. I'm actually in Canada, and a lot of people are going for their master electrician tickets in Canada, and they need to pass their exams. So I help sort of explain uh, the math involved in preparing for those exams. But what if you're an engineer? like I am, or a technologist or a technician who is working in the electrical industry. You don't necessarily have to pass any exams, but you want to know the Canadian Electrical Code or the National Electrical Code if you're in the U.S. You want to know some topics definitely before you go to, let's say, a job interview. So if you're new to the electrical industry and you're an engineer or you're a technician or a technologist, please watch, keep watching this video to see what I think are the best six topics to know from the National Electrical Code US and the Canadian Electrical Code. So let me show you my summary of these six sections. I recommend that you definitely take a look at National Electrical Code Article 100 or Canadian Electrical Code Section 0 which has the definitions that are will be used in this industry. You don't want to be going into this industry or an interview for this industry and not know these critical definitions. I do have another video that adds more definitions that you should know for this industry. And then there's the general rules. Whether you're in Canada or the United States, the National Engineering Code Article 110 or the Canadian Electrical Code Section 2 has broad administrative and technical rules that are going to apply to all electrical installations and usage unless they're superseded by other articles or sections in the code. Uh, these protect people, they protect property, they ensure safe maintenance and operation of electrical equipment. And again, these uh, codes are all about the safety of person and property. Um, and you can see my other video about the object and the scope of the code uh, being to prevent fire hazard and shock hazard, safe operation and safe equipment. You have to know all of that. Now, another section that is really important is that of conductors. So as an engineer, technician, technologist, you're a little bit more on the analytical side of using this code. And as an analytical person, you should know uh, this, how to calculate the safe current carrying capacity or the ampacity of conductors for specific applications or specific use cases. Um, you should know how to safely install them, what the color codes mean, um, how temperature accumulates inside a current carrying conductor and how that temperature is dissipated through the installation given how many conductors are together in a conduit, etc. are all things that you're going to need to be able to calculate. And those are found in the conductor section. Section 4 of uh, Canadian Electrical Code or in the NEC, you want to be looking at articles 200 and 310 and know those inside out and backwards. Uh, grounding and bonding, very important topics uh, to ensure that uh, shock doesn't happen. So there are grounding methods and bonding methods and electrodes and the connections. Those are found in Canadian Electrical Code Section 10, National Electrical Code Article 250. Make sure that you're familiar with that. You should also know about installation of electrical equipment because even though you uh, might not be installing it yourself, you're going to be working with equipment that is installed according to Canadian Electrical Code Section 26, National Electrical Code Article 110. This specifies um, uh, the, the you know the spaces between equipment, how in how uh, motors and generators need to be isolated and mounted, overcurrent protection. Uh, when installing these devices, protection and control and disconnect means all very important for the engineer, technician, and technologist. And lastly, a lot of engineers, technicians, and technologists, maybe you, maybe not you, um, deal with motors and generators. So motors and gen generators are, dealt, are both dealt with in Canadian Electrical Code Section 28, but in the National Electrical Code in the U.S., uh, they're separated in two articles, 430 and 445. This will deal with the protection and control, the installation, safe installation, safe um, use, nameplating, ratings, wiring, etc. of motors and generators. 
So in general, before you enter into the field, even if you have a good sound technical background in electrical engineering, um, engineering technologist, engineering technician in the electrical field, and even if you don't have to pass an exam and you're not a tradesperson, I recommend for your own worth, for your own uh, professional development, to take a look at these topics, these six topics in the Canadian Electrical Code or the National Electrical Code, um, and familiarize yourself with them to be a lot more um, uh, relevant and current and knowledgeable in your field. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you have questions about any of these. I have a lot of uh, playlists that go through each of these in great detail if you're interested. Thank you so much.